Conservative censorship on the web at NBC News' verification center forced to backtrack this morning after allegedly pushing Google to ban ads on a conservative website. The report says that the technology giant plan to demonetize both Zero Hedge and The Federalist over racist content in their comment section. Google reviewed the issue and said that The Federalist was never demonetized because it removed comments on its site. Joining me right now is former White House press secretary and Fox News contributor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Sarah, it's great to see you again. Thanks so much for being here. Great to be with you. Thanks, Maria. Well, it's interesting that Google can force the Federalists to eliminate their comment section. It's not like the Federalist wrote the comments. These are comments from people who read articles on the Federalist and want to comment on them. And yet, Google said, if you don't remove that comment section, we're going to cut into your ad revenue. I think it's a very dangerous game for Google to start playing the censorship card, um, particularly if they're going to focus all their efforts of censorship on conservative websites. And if they don't do the same on liberal websites, um, I think it shows a very clear bias and sends a very clear message about where they are leaning and where they're pushing people uh, to go. I think that's a very dangerous road for them to go down, just like the media shouldn't take a role in elections. Google and other big tech companies shouldn't either. They need to put information out there and let Americans decide for themselves where they're going to go. I've seen some pretty outrageous comments on a lot of liberal websites about the president and people in his administration, myself included, that have never been taken down, uh, never been asked to be removed by companies like Google. And I think this is a very dangerous road and one they should think very carefully about before they travel down it. It's probably one of the reasons that there are real questions about new legislation that will remove any protections that these social media companies have in terms of not getting sued because they're not content creators. In fact, Devin Nunes says that's exactly what they are, content creators. That's certainly what they're becoming, and they're moving more into that space. Um, and, and again, I think that that is a difficult place for them uh, to travel down, particularly we've seen so much intensity focused on censorship of conservatives, but not that same level of scrutiny placed on liberal websites. I think that they're putting themselves in a very bad position um, and not a very good one, I think, moving forward over the as we particularly get closer to the election and something I think they should take a big step back from. And that's across the board for big tech and social media platforms. Yeah. Dagan. Sarah, so many people in the media are upset with, and you experienced this firsthand, President Trump and the treatment of the media by people within the administration. However, I will point out to quote Sean Davis, the co-founder of The Federalist, that it is in fact NBC News that is interfering in the coverage of an election. Here's what Sean Davis wrote on Twitter. NBC News is in a lot of trouble given that they conspired with a secretive foreign outfit. He's referring to the UK Center for Countering Digital Hate to defame the Federalist and seek to interfere in U.S. elections by trying to get our publication banned and deplatformed in the middle of the 2020 election. So, members, some members of the media clearly need to hold up a mirror and look in it if they want to talk about the destruction of our constitutional protections of freedom of speech and the destruction of trust in the media. Absolutely. I think one of the things that we have, have seen uh, a significant amount of, particularly over the last several years, is uh, Democrats and liberals are all for freedom of speech as long as what you're saying is what they also believe. If you don't, then they want to shut that down, they want to censor it, they want to close you down. And I, I think that we see that more and more through these big tech companies. I think, again, they have got to take some real steps to correct this and make sure that they're not playing content creation, but they're simply providing a platform for other people to put information out there. Um, otherwise, I think they're going to find themselves in a lot of hot water moving forward.
Yeah, let me ask you about John Bolton, former national security advisor John Bolton, now being sued by the Trump administration over the release of his new book. So the Department of Justice says that the memoir still contains classified information that could compromise national security and should be blocked from release next week. The book's publisher says Bolton has fully cooperated with security guidelines. Sarah, your reaction? Uh, look, I haven't read the book, so it's hard to comment on specifics. But what I do know is I was in the room uh, with the president far more than John Bolton over the last three years. And based on what I'm hearing about the book and my experience, what I saw was a president who loves this country, spent every day trying to make it better. John Bolton echoed that message of the president's and publicly said a lot of very nice things about the president right up until the moment he got fired. Um, I find that to be extremely interesting. He had a moment that he could have testified under oath if he thought that there were impeachable offenses. He didn't. He often had an agenda that ran contrary to the president's. And I think what we're seeing right now is an effort to sell more books uh, by John Bolton. Yeah. And I think it's a sad thing and a, and a bad thing for the country that he's chosen to go down this road. All right, let's talk Father's Day just around the corner this upcoming Sunday, Sarah. We've got your father with us on the panel today. What do you have <laughs> planned for Sunday, Sarah? Um, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not going to get to be with my dad, but um, I, we have been able to spend some time uh, together. And, you know, I used to think that I was a pretty big deal to my dad. And then I had my own kids and I quickly learned that I didn't matter anymore. <laughs> and it was all about the grandkids, um, which is perfectly fine. And they've had a great time getting to spend some time with their papa. And uh, hopefully we'll have many homemade cards from them uh, for him on Sunday. <laughs> what about it, Governor? Yeah, you must be so proud. I, I would just say, Sarah, who? I, you know, I have these six wonderful yeah. grandchildren, three by Sarah, three by my other son. I don't even recognize her except when I see her on television. No, I don't believe it's a sad you. Day. It's, it's a too sad bad day. you're not going to see each other on Father's Day. Yeah, I mean, you, I, we, we see your posts and, and your beautiful family, Sarah. Congrats to you. Thank you. Great to see you this morning, Sarah. Sarah Sanders, Governor Huckabee, great to have you all morning long with us.